I am from El Paso, Texas. I'm a city council uh, representative in El Paso, Texas. Uh, my district borders New Mexico uh, to the west and the north and to the Mexican state of Chihuahua uh, to the south and the west. And we are uh, sometimes, I think, unfortunately, a city in Texas and not one in New Mexico. And I want to uh, commend um, the political leadership and the community leadership and the nonprofit leadership and the citizen leadership here in New Mexico for the great strides that you've made uh, in this area. It's truly an example for us in Texas and in other parts of the world. And so um, that it's also uh, great to be here and, and, and see this in, in person. Um, a, a little over uh, or a little under a year ago, January of 2009, um, the City Council of El Paso, Texas was presented a resolution uh, by the Committee on Border Relations. And the resolution aimed to um, memorialize the city's sympathy and empathy with our sister city of Ciudad Juarez. And for those of you who are not familiar with the geography of this area, we're just about three and a half, four hours by car down the road from Albuquerque. Um, and the city of El Paso is really part of a larger community of El Paso and Ciudad Juarez, which is uh, the largest state in, uh, the largest city in the state of Chihuahua. We're really one metroplex and, and often uh, tout ourselves as the largest binational metroplex in the world, about uh, 2.5 million people uh, altogether. And um, in Juarez, as, you, as you're probably aware, over the course of 2008, there was the most horrific uh, bloodshed, violence, and terrorism um, that the community had ever seen, and I would include uh, the Mexican Revolution in that, in the Battle of Juarez. Uh, it, was, it was simply uh, unprecedented and, uh, and so terrible that I think most people's reactions in El Paso, uh, including mine, was just to, uh, to turn our heads and look the other way. And, and I likened it to uh, almost a natural disaster, as though a hurricane had hit the city. Um, in that year, 1,600 people had been slaughtered in the most gruesome and grotesque fashion possible, uh, mutilated and tortured before they were killed, uh, their bodies uh, dismembered, beheaded, um, uh, displayed in public places, uh, messages scrawled on the corpses. Um, many of these killings taking place in drug rehabilitation centers, um, against the walls of elementary schools. Um, it, it was really terrible. But um, the response, as I said, was uh, one of, of looking the other way and, and hoping that this was going to pass, uh, much the way a natural disaster does. And so in that light, we received this uh, resolution that called for um, the, the uh, public display of sympathy and empathy for, for Ciudad Juarez, uh, and also made some really good policy statements and suggestions like trying to uh, increase the interdiction of guns and cash flowing south, of uh, um, focusing more on harm reduction uh, and, and other noble public policy goals. But in light of the bloodshed, I think those of us on the city council felt that the resolution did not go far enough. And so I authored a, a brief amendment um, to the resolution uh, asking that the U.S. and Mexico have an open and honest debate on ending prohibition. And, and, and it seems uh, like a pretty straightforward thing to ask, and, and it also seems in, in light of the carnage and bloodshed like you're not asking for a whole lot. You're just asking for a discussion um, in uh, you know the world's most powerful democracy, uh, and uh, there really couldn't be any harm in that. And actually, um, my fellow city representatives saw it the same way, and the resolution, as amended, was adopted on an 8-0 vote. And as I, as I like to say and remind people, um, and, and perhaps some of the political leaders uh, who are here today can can uh, uh, sympathize. You know, we can't agree 8-0 on anything. Uh, where to put a stop sign. <laughs> Uh, what to name a street, uh, how to set the tax rate. So, so for us to, to come to uh, a unanimous vote on perhaps one of the most politically charged uh, and, and politically dangerous topics in the United States today, I think really said something uh, to people about the severity of the problem. And uh, at that point, I thought that was it. We've made our statement. Uh, hopefully that will uh, influence uh, or at least be carried to Washington, D.C. and the Mexico City, and, and maybe in some small way will help uh, move the debate forward. Well, later that day, the mayor of El Paso uh, vetoed uh, the resolution, um, and 
So we put it on the council agenda for the following week in hopes to override the veto, which seemed like a, a done deal because you need six votes to override a veto. We had unanimous eight votes. Well, in that week, in the interim, each of us received a phone call from the U.S. Congressman for the area, Sylvester Reyes, who's one of the most powerful House members. He's the chair of the Intelligence Committee. Um, he's a long-serving Democrat and, and really a, a very powerful figure in Washington. And he called each of us and he said, look, if you go forward with this, um, it's going to be very hard to get your district the federal funding that you need. And uh, you, you may or may not know this, but El Paso is one of the, the poorest cities in the United States, and the zip code I represent, 79901, is uh, regularly one of the top three uh, or bottom three poorest zip codes, urban zip codes in the United States. So that's a, a very powerful threat. We, we really rely uh, a lot uh, on, on federal funding to deliver some very basic services in El Paso, Texas. And so um, he called all of us. He issued the threat in a very vague way. You know, uh, Congressman, uh, what project are you talking about cutting? Uh, how much money? Um, and, and he really couldn't answer it, but it was enough to persuade uh, four council members to change their votes. And each of them, interestingly enough, as we took the vote, said, look, I think what we did the previous week was the right thing to do. Uh, I just cannot sacrifice funding for my district. The people I represent need it, and I'm sorry, but I've got to change my vote. And, and in a way, um, it, it was the best thing that could have possibly happened uh, to move the debate forward because it drew so much attention and so much criticism and so much coverage nationally and internationally that it did much more than our unanimously passed resolution left on its own could have ever done. And, um, and, and we certainly... We, we certainly received a lot of heat uh, for, for passing this, but what was more impressive to me was the amount of support, most importantly locally, uh, that we received right after we passed this. And I think of uh, Dr. Stout, who is here from the University of Texas at El Paso, and the Students for Sensible Drug Policy. We have an incredibly strong and active chapter in El Paso, who, who, who really came there to, to support us, encourage us, and in the end, uh, led the way and those on council supported them as they organized a really important global policy forum that looked at the last 40 years of the drug war uh, in El Paso and Juarez. It's the front lines of the drug war. And, um, and as somebody said today, if this, this whole policy reform movement can be uh, characterized as a four lap race, the fourth lap is about to start and I think we've seen uh, the generation that's going to carry that forward. And so, but, but then on top of that, I received hundreds of phone calls, letters and emails from around the country uh, and around the world from, from many of you. And until that point, I didn't know you existed. Uh, I, didn't know, um, I, I didn't know about really or care, frankly, um, about any of the issues that we're here to talk about uh, today because they seem to me uh, academic or unimportant in the scheme of things or unimportant in my personal life. Um, but you know, I immediately heard from Ethan Nadelman who offered encouragement and support. I heard from Terry Nelson and the folks at LEAP. Um, I heard from a number of uh, everyday citizens who were just encouraged by the step that this council was taking. So I want to thank you uh, for, for doing that. And, and I want to end by saying this. Um, you know, perhaps in some small way we did contribute to moving the debate forward. And I think the debate is much further along in, in that short span of about 11 months since we passed that resolution. Um, however, uh, last year, 1,600 people were killed in this gruesome fashion fought us. This year, to date, uh, almost 2,200 people uh, have been killed in my community. Um, and so uh, I want to tell you that the work that you're doing could not be any more important. Uh, it could not be any more urgent. And uh, it, it could not do uh, more than, than anything else to change the fate of my community of El Paso Juarez. So I want to personally thank you uh, for the work that you do, and I want to wish you all possible speed and strength in the fight. Thank you.